world, my name is Day and welcome to Spanglish Generation. Today's video marks the fifth in my series, The Real Cuba, which exposes the Cubans' experience with what started as was sold to us as socialism turned communism and now totalitarian regime. I really do appreciate your support, so if you do find value in the content that I provide for you, I would appreciate that you, of course, subscribe, click that notification bell, like, comment, and help me spread the message by sharing. In today's video, we'll go over five things that if you aren't Cuban, you probably don't know that they happen on the island of Cuba. Some of these things are normal to the rest of the world, but you will learn that in Cuba, nothing is like the rest of the world. So let's jump right to it and start with number five. Milk is only for children under seven. You heard correctly, yes. As you may know, rations are assigned by the system according to your age and dietary nutritional needs, so they say. So according to the Cuban system, after age seven, a child has no need for milk anymore, so it's removed from their diet. So forget those Fruit Loops. So what if you want milk? Well, you can't have any. Or yes, you can if you can find it in one of those stores that sells overpriced items and dollars. So if you have family abroad that can send you dollars or euros, you may be able to find it in one of those stores. But good luck with that. Moving on to number four is neighborhood surveillance called CDR, CDR, or Committee of the Defense of the Revolution, which is basically the communist version of the neighborhood watch or neighborhood watch on steroids. The CDR is part of the reason why the government has been so successful at controlling people's activities. There is approximately one home assigned per block representing the initiative and they are in charge of organizing surveillance, community activities, and pushing the government initiatives among the community, among the neighbors. They are also responsible for informing the authorities of any suspicious activity that may be anti-revolutionary. The CDR leader keeps a detailed record of the people that live in his or her territory, and even of the visitors that come by. When we went to Cuba to visit the first time, we stayed at my aunt's house. I was a teenager and I recall my parents being interrogated by the CDR, wanting to know our reasons for visiting the island, how long we would stay, where we would stay, and what our itinerary was. What do they get in return for doing this? Well, not much, just basically the credit of being an exemplary revolutionary. Ironically, many of these people that harassed and oppressed Cubans for things like the intention of fleeing to the U.S. Many of these people live in the U.S. today, <laughs> collecting the social assistance of many deserving Americans. Guess who these people are going to vote for? Oh yes, yeah? ironic, huh? That's what we call descarados, which means you have no shame. In spot number three, we have beef. Yes, meat. Beef was illegal in Cuba up to just a few weeks ago. There are many people serving 30 year sentences for being caught red handed with beef. So if you raise cattle in your own little neck of the woods, you could not kill it to eat it. I mean, you could, but you were not allowed. So first, the government counts what you have. So they keep record of what you have. Second, if you live in the really deep woods and you were able to hide a calf or something like that, and you eventually killed it to eat it, you were running tremendous risk. There are generations of Cuba that have no idea what a steak tastes like. And even now that it is legal, it is so expensive and has so many restrictions that it might as well be illegal. Moving on to spot number two, we have foreigners in their own country. Cuba's touristic destinations are filled with marvelous five-star empires. Parentheses. People say that the embargo has ruined the economy, but there seems to be plenty of money to build these five-star hotels and push medical tourism. While Cubans keep dying because their homes fall on their heads, but back to the topic. What you may not know is that just up to a few years ago, Cuban nationals were not even allowed inside these facilities. You needed to have a foreign passport 
in order to access the hotels. So forget the staycation. First you ask, what Cuban could afford it anyway, right? Well, what if your family came from the US or from Europe and they were visiting and wanted to treat you to a day at the pool or a brunch or even dinner? Well, you'd have to go without them because they were simply not allowed to enter. That has since changed and Cubans are allowed to enter these facilities under a lot of scrutiny and side eye. They can set foot in these beautiful buildings they grew up around wondering what they looked like inside. Not that they can afford anything there, but at least they can look. And the number one spot goes to the danger. This applies to a lot of activists and people who have tried to express themselves or manifest disagreement with the Cuban government. In this case, you're cataloged as dangerous and you can be arrested and processed under that category. You don't have to have a criminal background record. You don't have to be caught doing anything illegal. All that is needed is the suspicion that you are involved in anti-revolutionary activities or have anti-revolutionary ideas. If you're an artist who doesn't have traditional employment and or you're involved in artivism or human rights activism, you can be processed for being a dangerous individual to the Cuban society. How many of us on TikTok would be in jail? This has disproportionately affected the communities like the Rosas in Cuba, whom I've had the pleasure of speaking with. And this is a real severe, unfair, frustrating practice that does affect all Cubans but especially these communities. Could you imagine going to jail just for disagreeing with the government? And there you have it. I hope this has given you a closer look at how things work on the communist island of Cuba that for 62 years has been ruled under inhumane conditions that violate all human rights. My videos are also meant for you to understand why so many Cubans risk their lives crossing the ocean on a raft or traveling the South American jungle crossing border after border, risking their lives on their quest for freedom. Please know that communism has destroyed Cuba and will destroy any nation that opens its doors to it. This isn't fear mongering. This is just us Cubans telling our story of what happened to us. It doesn't mean that it will happen here. It just means be educated so you're never caught off guard. People don't know what they don't know. So let's help them know together. See you next time. Now is my time to shine. Let's when your time comes, don't postpone it. When others doubt and out, you don't condone it. Truth be told, yourself is your toughest opponent. When your moment comes, grab hold and own it. Never let go.